Hi there, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on gluten and depression. So a very good study that actually came by my desk last week from the Journal of Elementary Pharmacology and Therapeutics 2014 in April. It was a study looking at short-term gluten exposure and depression. So let's kind of walk through what the study said and kind of what the take-home is and what the underlying mechanisms are that what gluten exposure would cause depression, how it would cause depression, what's the mechanism, let's break that down too. So again, the conclusion of the study was short-term gluten exposure induced depression with no GI symptoms. So that's the key thing. So many people are ingrained of, oh, well, if something affects my tummy, if something I eat, well, I'm going ha to have symptoms like bloating or gas or diarrhea, and those symptoms were constant across each of the groups. But what changed, though, was the depression and some anxiety as well. So again, the study looked at, just to be very clear, looked at gluten causing depression in gluten-sensitive individuals that were non-celiac. So what that means is people that have celiac, it's an autoimmune condition that wears away the microvilli in the small intestine. There's a couple of markers they used. Um, they used HLA-DQ2 and A testing as well as blood testing to confirm the celiac disease. And, and if they were negative for that, then they were considered a non-celiac person and they put them in that group. So they, all the controls did not have celiac disease at all. So they could make sure it wasn't a celiac person throwing off the results because celiac people traditionally are sensitive to gluten. And in the conventional literature, only people that are celiac are supposed to be sensitive. But we know that there's this, what we call non-celiac, meaning you don't have to have the full-blown celiac disease to be gluten sensitive. So in this study, they had three groups. First off, for the first three days of the group, all of the people were gluten-free as well as low FODMAP. Now, this is important because a lot of people think, well, is it the gluten, is it the FODMAPs? But in this study, they actually controlled and they kept the FODMAPs low and went gluten-free. Now, they had three groups. One group had 16 grams of vital uh, gluten protein. The other group had 16 grams of whey protein. And group C, the third group, had nothing. So they just ate the plain old gluten-free diet, low FODMAPs. And what they found three days before... They kind of had a baseline, then they went and they ate this type of diet here for three more days. And then again, they gave various questionnaires, uh, personality, looking at depression, anxiety, all these different symptoms. And what really showed up was the anxiety and the depression. And that's key because how many people get exposed to gluten and they just don't feel good for a couple days? And they're like, you know, what is that? And something as simple as gluten, even if you don't have celiac, even if you're gluten-sensitive non-celiac, right, you could still be manifesting these symptoms because of that gluten exposure. And that's really key. So let's look at the underlying mechanisms why. So for instance, in this study, they actually talk about the gut-brain access. So we have various microbes, these little critters here with a little smiley face. These are our good bacteria. These good bacteria send feedback signals back to the brain. Uh, they produce nutrition in the guts. And we have this whole communicational feedback loop called the gut-brain axis, where we have releasing hormones from the hypothalamus and pituitary that come down and control gut function. And then there's various inhibiting or um, you know, refluxing hormones that go back up. We have this with every single gland in our body. We have it with our thyroid, with our adrenals. We have it with our, our gonads as well. So why shouldn't we have it with our gut? So basically, dysfunction in the gut-brain axis more than likely, lots of bad bacteria, lots of dysbiosis, lots of SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, lots of food allergens, lots of inflammation. That's going to disrupt this, this feedback loop. So having healthy gut bacteria is important. Again, antibiotic exposure, things like that, extra medications, extra alcohol and such, that's an aware way that gut. So we really want to make sure we're eating a healthy diet. If you have uh, SIBO, cutting out FODMAPs would be very important adding in probiotics, addressing any chronic infection. Chronic infection is really important because that will just constantly throw off your gut microbes and bacteria and put stress on your immune system. Next, this is a, a, a side view of our intestinal tract, our small intestine. These are our various microvilli here. And these guys absorb nutrition. So you can see one of the things they're talking about is decreased 5-HTP absorption in the gut. So 5-HTP is a precursor to serotonin. So you can see 5-HTP would then convert over 
to brain serotonin. So this is the blood-brain barrier here. It's really important to note that 5-HTP gets converted to serotonin, but serotonin cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. So what has to happen is 5-HTP can cross the blood-brain barrier and then it would get converted to serotonin in the brain. But if we're not making enough, we're not absorbing enough of the serotonin, if we have decreased 5-HTP coming out of the intestinal tract, well, automatically if there's a deficit coming out here, there's going to be a deficit in the brain. And that's really, really important. If we don't absorb that 5-HTP that doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier, we cannot convert it to serotonin. And that's important. Also to note, about 50% of the cells in the brain are microglial cells. They're, they're immune cells. I did a video on this last week. So when we're constantly lighting up those cells with inflammatory molecules, right? those cells continue to pop, 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 because they're constantly responding to inflammation. And because there's so, such a great percentage of the brain are immune cells, they turn off pretty difficult. And it takes a lot to get them dampened. So once they're on, they turn on pretty easily, and it's pretty tough to turn them off. So again, gut-brain access here, we have a decrease of 5-HTP. If we have decrease of 5-HTP, we're not going to be able to convert 5-HTP over to serotonin when it crosses the blood-brain barrier. And then next over here, we have hypoperfusion or decreased blood flow. So what that means is we have these arteries, these garden hoses that go right by the side of our neck called our carotids. This is my version of the carotid over here. Looks like little Popeye muscles, but you can see what's happening is the gluten over here is actually choking the blood flow up to the brain. And there's actually a handful of studies showing hypo or decreased perfusion, decreased blood flow, and we need that blood flow. And they see that blood flow, especially in the frontal cortex. And that's important because the frontal cortex is where your personality, higher thinking, behavior, uh, all of these higher functions that make us humans comes. And if we don't have blood flow, we don't have oxygen. If we don't have oxygen, we don't have nutrition as well. And they had studies like this where they gave people gluten and they saw increased um, migraines. And when they de did a spec scan and looking at blood flow going up into the brain, they saw a decreased amount of blood flow in the frontal cortex. And it's very possible that's what's happening here and that's what's causing some of the depression symptoms. Very possible. We don't know for sure, but that's a mechanism that's already uh, supported in the scientific literature. So again, lots of good information here. If you're getting exposed to gluten, even if you're, it's cross-contamination in a restaurant or such, or you're out having a, a binge day, maybe for your so-called cheat day, well, that can cause ramifications like depression. So just want everyone to be aware of it. Some people that are gluten sensitive and have autoimmune conditions need to be off gluten long term and can't even afford a cheat day. But at least if you're not if you're not feeling too good and you're feeling a little down, you can at least connect it back to maybe some gluten exposure. So again, this is Dr. Justin here. Feel free to check below the video for more information how to get a hold of my various newsletters, YouTube channels, and websites. And again, stay tuned for more videos coming your way. Thanks. Have a great day.